I'm delighted and very excited to be joined today by Ron Davis and Janet Defoe, who are well known throughout the ME community as Whitney Defoe's parents. Both Ron and Janet are desperate to find a cure for ME and save the millions missing across the world, starting with their son. Ron is a professor of biochemistry and genetics at Stanford University, and since Whitney's diagnosis, he's dedicated his work to understanding the disease. Janet is a licensed clinical psychologist who worked primarily with adolescents and children before staying at home to become a full-time carer for her son. This is my best friend since we were eight years old, Linda Neal, and I'm at her house in the forest in Oregon near the Three Sisters Mountains. All of you guys in the UK probably never heard of any of that, but we're <laughs> in the forest. And, um, she has known Whitney since he was born. Yep. And she's done all kinds of things with our family and she knows Whitney really well. So I thought it would be fun for her to tell you something about what he was like. What he is like, because <laughs> I mean, that's, I think that's the important thing because Whitney was always um, really connected. He'd like see things. I mean, I'm think I know probably most people have seen his photography, but he was, he was just, he really paid attention to little things, to like little, little details of, of nature. He loved being out. We had, we had great times. We'd camp and when he was a little kid, we'd go camping and he'd, he was a little astonished by me, I think, because <laughs> sometimes, because, uh, you know, I, it, Anyway, we had, we had, we really had a good time and he, he and my daughter, whose name is Joanna, who's a little bit older than he is, were great friends. They were really great friends and that, um, and they, I remember going to some lake and um, just watching them go off in that. Remember we went Lake on, of the Woods. Yeah, that was Lake of the Woods and they went off in some inflatable canoe or something like that and but he but he's always and right now I'm impressed by his um by by his dedication and by his um what he's willing to do to help other people that have the same disease that he has and um his depth of of understanding, and I'm I'm actually just really grateful that he has a um, something that he's contributing to the world. You know, even though he's really, really, really sick and you know can't eat and talk and all that, he's he's still contributing something really important. And I feel like even though he's so sick, he's still touching so many people's lives, and that comes yeah. from from, you know, no matter what state his health is in, that comes from his heart. Yes. And he always had that kind of deep heart connection for people. Um, yeah. I mean, when he was little. Yeah. And he would work hard too in the, um, in some of the ceremonies that we've been a part of, he, uh, he you know, he, he was doing things and uh, that older people maybe would have done. And he worked really hard to do them too. Um, some of the things we have done are not, have not been necessarily easy. Um, so it's not like he would give up. He, he wouldn't give up and he's not giving up. And he has um, incredible faith in his dad you know, and, um, and what he's doing. And, you know, I think what Janet and everybody has done has just been a great contribution to the whole world, really mm -hmm. great contribution. So anyway, I look forward to the time when we're going to be able to, when Whitney and I will be able to go outside again and, and breathe some air some beautiful air and feel the sun and uh, and 
do ceremony again. You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that time. I think, I think everything that you say, it just obviously the world, the ME community know Whitney as, as the Whitney that we see now and the Whitney that said, shared on social media. So to know the person that he is beyond that is just incredible. And you can see, you know, even talking to you now, how much of a, an impact he's made on, on your life and, and how much people are fighting for him to have his own life back. Yeah. Well, we're all we're all holding that thought and praying that that's going to happen. And it's um, not just up to these two that are sitting here, Ron and David, Ron and Janet. Although sometimes I think they take it on. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot more people who are uh, working towards us now, largely because of the efforts they began. But it's going to be something that we all do together. I think Ron and Janet are very much leading the way for a lot of people right now and really helping kind of drive momentum into ME research. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any... That's the goal. Whitney, when I was younger, or at the Native American ceremonies we went to, the Sundance in particular, or Whitney was that. Whitney was would work on the fire, you know, and that was by working on the fire that's um, keeping the fire going, which we get, which for the Sundance goes for four days um, all, all the time, you know, down there at night and etc. So he would work, and he was he didn't say a lot. He um, wasn't like he was a talkative kid who was distracting people. He was, he was pretty focused, you know, he was really focused. And um, that was something that was um, not common for somebody that was his age, you know, who would, a lot of them would just kind of go off, et cetera, but he really took it seriously and he was very, very focused. Um, so, and my husband, who recently passed away, was um, noticed that. And my husband's a native, was a Native American elder, and he really noticed Whitney. And um, yeah, I really hope that one day the rest of the world can can meet the Whitney that that you guys know and describe. Cause me too. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing that. I really appreciate it. One of the things that I've, I've been doing to help me through uh, pandemic times is it's actually what I'm doing right now. Um, I found a little pocket of nature to sit in. I'm in the, I'm right in the middle of the city of Glasgow, but uh, I'm in one of the back lanes. And, and in fact, this is something I've been doing for, for years and years. And uh, if you were to see me or run into me right now, you might, you know, some, some, some of you might think, well, there's, there's an odd man who is, <laughs> what's he up to? Um, but I think over the years, especially with having ME, I've learned not to care what people think. And, you know, I do my thing and I look, look how many layers of clothes I, I have on. I've got, you know, I just get really wrapped up and I'll go out and try and find a, a sunny spot. It's wonderful to be outside um, in nature. It just changes everything, changes your whole perspective. Um, and I would re you recommend it to the best of your strength if you if you can to just get outside. I'm sure you I'm sure you do this. Um, but don't be 
inhibited by thinking, well, you know, what will people think of me? You know, whether I'm in a, a wheelchair or whether you you have to take your, your duvet, wrap yourself in the duvet to sit in the garden. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just, just try, try and make the, the most of it. Um, it's good to get the, the sun on your, on your, on your skin. It uh, naturally promotes the, uh, the manufacture of vitamin D in, in your skin, which is important to make sure you have uh, that your vitamin D is topped up. Um, and so we all found that when, um, when the pandemic started, that our geographical areas became smaller. You know, we weren't allowed to get out so much. And um, so I just took to um, taking my time with long, uh, with slow, really slow walks uh, around about where I live. And as I was saying, finding finding pockets to hide in, to to sit in, and uh, to ponder, and sometimes to to meditate. Um, I think maybe some of you know that I I do a weekly meditation sort of class, and um, on a Sunday. And I, I've kept that up. Uh, I started it during the lockdown and I've kept that up. And um, it wasn't just for others that I was doing that. It was, it's for me too. I, I just love the, um, I love meditating, but uh, I love getting together on a Sunday with like-minded people. And, and I feel that when we meditate together, it, uh, it just feels more effective for me. It's quite, um, it's quite, I've found it quite life affirming. So, so certainly meditation is a, uh, a big thing for me, has been for a while. And um, I think it, especially uh, during the lockdown and uh, meditating online uh, with, a, with a bunch of people it's a real tonic, um, so I, I would I would recommend that. That's um, there's all sorts of things you can do online socially, but almost meditating uh, with people is almost as good online as as you are in a in a class. Uh, so that um, that is something I'd really recommend. Hi. Right, so the next question that the guys were asking me um, is how do what do you say to people that are maybe losing hope or thinking that this thing is never going to end well they're talking about the pandemic but of course they could be talking about MECFS I think the lessons are exactly the same I think the um, that our attitude or our direction should be exactly the same and the, the deal is acceptance it's one word it's easy to say and it's 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 not easy to it's not easy to pull off especially if your life has been stopped in its tracks by ME or your life has been stopped in its tra tracks by the pandemic but if we can if we can accept what's happening in our lives that's the that's really the the starting point for good things to start happening again again we really have to learn to to live all over again this is me talking about me mostly but I, again, I must say that I think perhaps the experience of of MECFS ha, has perhaps helped some of us um, with the 
with you know dealing with this pandemic that we've we have these powers already these powers of acceptance uh you know life does tend to throw crap at all of us at some point and if it isn't you know if it isn't me or a pandemic it'll be something else so the, you know the key thing for everybody is to is to try and find a, a form of patient acceptance um Because I think if you find patient acceptance, that what what will happen is your mind will become peaceful. If your mind becomes peaceful, not only do you stand a much greater chance of being happy, but you will actually, you know, if your mind is peaceful and it's not anxious, then your body will actually have a much better chance of uh, recovery um, you're, you're giving it every every opportunity you're giving it every chance uh, to physically recover there's such a connection between between mind and body and I think you probably all already know that 